if we write the solution u, which is a function of t, a vector function of t, as u1, u2, etc., to un minus 1, assuming we know the boundary conditions, which means we don't have to solve for u0 and un, then what we have is du as a, as a vector dt would be equal to something times u. What is that something? Yeah? It's a trinagonal matrix. It's a, it's, uh, negative 1, negative 2, 1, negative 2, 1. It's going to be a matrix, right? And the matrix can be constructed by looking at the coefficients. For example, the diagonal entries of the matrix is the coefficients corresponding to the same ui as the i that appears on the left-hand left side. That coefficient, kappa times minus 2 divided by delta x squared, is what is going to be appearing on the diagonal. And that is the same in this case for every diagonal element. There are also going to be off-diagonal elements corresponding to ui plus 1 and ui minus 1. Because the uis are ordered in an increasing manner, the one corresponding to ui plus 1 is going to be where? Think of how you multiply a matrix and a vector. <coughs> to the right. It's going to be on the upper diagonal because you are going to be multiplying, let's say this is ui, the ui plus 1, you need to multiply this element and put it on this row of the equation. So, so that has to be here. So kappa divided by delta x squared. And in this case, if you make an error, it actually doesn't matter because the lower diagonal is the same number. But that's not true for all discretizations. And if you just look at this, this corresponds to boundary conditions of u0 and un equal to both 0. Because the very first equation, the very first equation does not have a term corresponding to u0. The very last term does not have a, so this is nothing. This is also nothing, right? Nothing means the coefficient here multiplied by 0. And in case you have non-trivial boundary condition, how should you modify this matrix equation? Hmm? Interpolation? Yeah, but what sh what you should you? Hmm? You make it a circular matrix. You make it a circular matrix. If you make it a circular matrix, if you put things here and here, you oh. get you get periodic boundary conditions, right? Okay. If you are u zero is equal to un minus 1, and un is equal to u1, then by adding two numbers here are uh, the right solution. What if u0 is equal to 1, un is equal to minus 1? What do you get? How do you modify this equation? Yes? Could add a constant? You could add a constant, exactly. So if u0 is equal to a null number, that null number is going to be a constant. That doesn't depend on this vector u. So it is going to be this equation plus something. And that something has to be a vector, right? Has to be a vector of the same length as u. And that vector only has to be non-zero for two equations. Which two are they? First and last, we only need to modify the first row and the last row, first equation and last equation. So starting from the second to the second last, it'll be zeros. And the first, for the first one, it'll be kappa over delta x squared times u0. For the, for the last one, it'll be kappa over delta x squared times un. Right? These are given numbers, and you know them. So this is a constant term. At the end, what you get is du dt equal to au plus b. Well, a is that matrix, b is that vector. 
that's a standard ODE you can solve using standard methods. So this is what we achieve by discretizing the equations. What we achieve is we start from an ODE, or we start from a PDE, we approximate the function, and uh, we approximate the spatial derivative. What we get is an ODE we can solve. Yes? Do you need to add um, rows and columns and zeros into the matrix stuff, or not? Um, Do I need to add a, a row of zeros into the matrix? Yes. In this case, no, because I want the matrix to be a square matrix. du dt has the same length as u, right? So the output of the a times u has to be the same length as u, which means the matrix has to be square. So here the matrix is already square. You are correct in some other cases when, when you derive the discretization and the matrix is not square. For example, if, if the solution, if the boundary condition is more complex so that u0 and un is also unknown, then after you derive the matrix, you may not get a square matrix. In that case, you may add rows onto the matrix. Maybe not necessarily uh, zero, but like you need to add rows that behave differently. Yeah. So in this case, we, we don't have to because we already derived the time time derivative of all the unknowns. All right, so for example, if you implement this into OD solver, what you need to do is you need to, in MATLAB, you need a function that, that calculates A times U plus B. That's all you need to write. You need to pre-calculate what A is, you need to pre-calculate what B is. But in the ODE solver, what you are going to be writing is a function that just does that. All right, so it's that simple. The trick or the math goes into construction of A and construction of B.